The light ah, says it's live. We are live. <laughs> Hi, Art. Hey, Devin. How are you? I'm awesome. How are you? I'm doing well. It's good to see. We've got show number four on docket for today, huh? This is this great. Is... What a way to end the new year, starting a brand new thing at the end of the year. I think that's a great way to uh, start 2014. I, I love this fact. I mean, I think we've had a great success with SpringPad so far this year. I love the community's growth. Ugh. I mean, we went from basically nothing to we're almost at 600 users so far in just the community itself. There's a lot of Facebook people checking in and, and Twitter people in, so it's it's great to see people using it. I it looks it. like, though, you're at the North Pole with the amount of stuff you got sitting behind. Is that is that your stash? I mean, is that <laughs> the stuff that people These have given you? all for me, yes, of course. Uh, no, actually, um, every year SpringPad has a holiday party where, you know, the group of us get together and celebrate the year and each other, and, uh, but as part of that, we do a toy drive, so everybody brings in an unwrapped toy, um, there's a local business, um, that collects all of them and donates them, so we do our own collection here and bring it over, and this year we decided to add a food drive into that because we know that everybody's got extra food laying around their house. Um, so we made sure that all of us went through our pantries, found unexpired food items, and collected them so that we can give away something even more. So this is our collection so far. I think we have a little more coming, but uh, it's food and toys for the holidays. That's great. It's always yeah. good good to see that. And I know SpringPad's really good about that kind of giving back effort, and it's really important that that's happening. So it's, yeah, and it's we're nice doing some more actually next year. Um, we participated in a community event. Um, with TUG, uh, Technology Underwriting Greater Good. It's a Boston organization. Mm -hmm. um, they have a day of service that we participated in in the fall, which I think I already talked about. Right. Um, but we're starting a new series of events uh, next year that we're holding ourselves, and each one is going to benefit a different charity. So I'll have more about that next year, but we're going to start making really? a regular thing. Yeah. That's wild. I love yeah. to hear well, tell you what, why don't you get us started off with the news and what's going on in the SpringPad world, yes. and then we'll jump into a kind of a sneak peek into a couple of hacks that I've been working on over the past couple of weeks, and then we'll bring our special guest on and get, talk to her a little bit. So cool. go for it. Well, I'm going to say before I get started that before we end, I'm going to want to see your special guest behind you sitting on that uh, shelf. So maybe we'll... Oh, Mr. Monkey up here? <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll close the show with an introduction to him because he just made my day. <laughs> well, I'll tell you a story about him too when we get to it. He almost was a no-show for the show because of my kids. So. Uh-oh. <laughs> but we're, we'll talk about him later. Cool. Well, uh, as all of you know, this has been a really big year for us. We've had a lot of uh, big changes, but ones that uh, sort of um, were more about helping you out and less about sort of changing things dramatically. Um, and how you are seeing the app and using it day to day. They were sort of focused on sort of simple updates that make things easier for you. Our notes, um, the new notebook templates that, or custom notebooks, sorry, that we just came out with. And now a lot of you have probably seen for the holidays, there were some other special notebooks that we presented along with some professional organizers like Jeffrey Phillip and Peter Walsh. Um, and that's something that we are really passionate about here because we realize that we're a great tool for organizing, but there's also a lot of experts out there who have really great ideas about um, how, to, how to make your life more organized. And so we thought it would be great that instead of having you discover one and then the other and try to put them together, that we do that for you. So we're working with a lot of professional organizers in 2014 to give you even more customized notebooks that really help you do very specific things um, along with their advice and their tips so that you get a real soup to nuts experience of uh, organizing yourself with help. Um, so you're not doing it all alone. And again, we're sort of taking a lot of the work away from you and doing it ourselves and delivering you a total package. So I know that's very vague but there'll be more to come starting January 1st. Um, and I will tell you that one of the things I'm most excited about is we're going to be delivering you um, a tip or give you the option to get a tip every single day in the month of January. So you can opt in to receive a quick email tip that'll come from one of our organizers and um, it'll really, really help you each day make the most of January. So more to come on that. That's great. And I have to admit, I do know a little bit about what's going on and 
these are name people that are participating in this. I mean, these are not just regular everyday organizers. You've got people like Regina Leeds, who we've already met. You've got people coming up that I'm not even going to say about, but they're they're nationally known, respected organizers, and who authors. Have in, and authors, and who have bought into the whole spring pad idea, have started to see how it could be used, and are putting it to use. And I think that's fantastic. So. Yeah, we're really excited about it, and even in just in you know setting things up and talking to them already, these people have blown my mind. I mean, I thought I knew everything there was to know about organizing, but the way they think about it and their philosophies and the way they're able to understand how each one of us individually struggles in different areas, and then help us in like an inspire, an inspiring and fun way, that has completely blown my mind. And I just I can't wait to share everything from them with you guys. So. Very that's very soon. Just get through the holidays first. <laughs> well, and that's the big thing too. Is I mean, we got to we keep in mind that we've been working so hard all year. Everybody's been working on their various projects, daily work, daily life, you know, even trying to keep things organized. And this is the time of year to take a breath. Yep. And yep. once you enjoy those downtimes, enjoy those periods, and really look back and then look forward. And it, I wrote an article earlier this week for Productivious talking about managing expectations and that's really one of these pieces start looking at the expectations you're putting on yourself what you put on this year and what you're going to put on next yep. and start to get those structures in place so that you're going to not feel overwhelmed and overstressed absolutely and I can tell you that it, as soon as we hang up or we finish this uh, video call uh, we're going to be start setting up for our spring pad holiday party so we're going to spend the rest of the night playing games and uh, enjoying the afternoon and can you guys still see me yep can see you just fine awesome I am so glad to hear that um, okay so Art, let's move over to you I want to hear about your latest hack well I've been having a little fun with this and the it is the camera locked in because I'm gonna do a screen share in a minute yep you, I can see you so you should be all set all right that's good just wanted to make sure that it's flipping around the way it needs to be uh, what I've been doing lately I work for a company that focuses on Microsoft based technology. So we live and die in Microsoft Outlook. And I figured there's got to be a way to get SpringPad and Outlook to cooperate. And sure enough, there's two ways I figured out to make it work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick screen share here. One of them is I figured out a way to embed SpringPad into Outlook. There's several steps. It's not exceptionally complicated but it's not something that you just click a button and it happens but once you've got it set up you're able to interact with SpringPad in your copy of Outlook just as if you were using your regular web browser so when you're a guy like me who lives inside of Outlook this makes all of this information at your fingertips without having to bounce in and out of different apps so I found this like adding a tab to your browser isn't it it's very similar to adding a tab. The process is basically adding a folder into Outlook and then changing the properties on the folder so that when it loads, it actually loads up the SpringPad homepage. So you can see here I've got a favorite over here for SpringPad. All I do is click on it and I come right into my page itself. So, so that was how to set this up here. Are we gonna do like how's this gonna work? Uh, what I'm doing is I'm actually gonna write a couple of blog posts about it and post it out, and we'll share it out into the community and on Twitter and various places so that people have the step-by-step -step directions on how to do it. Because it does take a few steps and it kind of gets down in the in the technical weeds on some of the areas. And I can't guarantee it works for every version of Outlook, but in the specific situ situation that I have, it seems to work pretty well. So it may be worth giving a shot for people. So how does this work for you in terms of like your, you know, your workflow, your day to day, you know, trying to get things done? Like, how does this hack save you time? Well, this actually this helps me because it gives me direct access. But the second part of the hack is the more powerful one, and that's using Outlook's ability to create templates to submit information into SpringPad that has made a huge amount of difference. And here's what I mean. One of the things that you can do in Outlook is you can create, say, an email and then save that email as a template. Actually drop it onto your desktop because there's an option to say save as Outlook template. That icon that's now on your desktop, when you double click on it, it'll generate an email like you see here with your dedicated SpringMail email address already in it and the structures you need 
to submit this into SpringPad as a fully finished email. So now, for example, when I need to capture a task that I have to do, I don't have to open a browser and open SpringPad and start a task note and complete the note. I can actually, on my desktop, just double-click on that task email template. This pops open. I fill out the task, type in the notebook that I want to drop this into, add in any tag I want, put in any content that I'd like, and then hit send. And that's it. And off it goes, and when I go over to SpringPad, it'll automatically be there and be stored. And it's more than just tasks. I do this same type of thing for meeting notes. So if I'm going to have a call, I just pop open the call template. I have the structure that I want for all my information. When I'm done, I send that in. And even to the point of providing formatted notes. So in this case, it's, I have a template here for blog ideas. When the idea hits me, I fill out the structure. And what's really nice about this is because Outlook's sending it in as HTML, when I go over to SpringPad, it comes in formatted. Whoa, that is so cool. So it's a nice, easy way to be able to go in and work with the system in a way that I, I normally couldn't do before, but it gives me that opportunity to really put things together. So... So just to give a little, the one part that I want to explain for people who might not know is the, um, what he's talking about with email in is a feature where we give you a, a special SpringPad email address right. and you can send emails to yourself in SpringPad and it saves that uh, email into your SpringPad account. Um, but we take it a step further where if you can tell it what type of thing you want to save into SpringPad, like a task, for example, um, and you can say, you know, task and give it a task name and set a due date and things like that. So um, it's a really cool feature. It's actually really easy to use. Um, and that's part of what Art was talking about here. It's one of our most popular features. Um, so we'll make sure to share the link that details the different ways that you can use it because it's really convenient. And for those of you who use IFTTT, um, mm -hmm. those special formulas that, you know, sort of make recipes that do things faster, um, you can use email in with that too um, to do some really really cool stuff. Um, I know one time I did uh, I used an IFTTT recipe that allowed me to save all my Instagram photos into a SpringPad notebook. So I made kind of a, a virtual um, photo album. Mm -hmm. That's actually what I've done along that same line is I have an IFTTT which is if this then that if you want to translate the name. Um, I have one of those set up connected to Facebook so that every time I post a picture to Facebook, it then posts it back over to SpringPad, tagged as coming from Facebook as a journal entry. So now I have this journal in SpringPad of all my Facebook posts and pictures. So I have this kind of running history that's built. All right, that's another hack. You have to... Yeah, I know, I got down. lots of them. I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> So um, just so you guys know, if you want to hear all of our attacks, he posts them on the community regularly, and they range from the more complex ones, like he just outlined with Outlook, but also more simple ones, like he has his own strategy for a virtual photo album in uh, SpringPad. He also made a virtual bartender, which I love. Uh, it's a great way to get through holiday parties by and being able to make really cool cocktails, even if you don't know all the recipes, you sort of still have them at your fingertips. So he posts those regularly on the community, and they're fantastic. Yeah, and I'll let a cat out of the bag too. I'm working towards an ebook right now of spring hacks. So still, it, it's still in the rough stages. Still, I'm doing double duty of not only coming up with the hacks, but also trying to figure out if I can write an ebook using SpringPad, which so far it's working really well. So that may be another one. Uh, and but I want to be able to talk to Daniel next year. We're going to talk right. to him on the show, talking about how to publish your own ebook. And he's been really successful in the past, as most of you probably know. Who know him? He wrote a SpringPad ebook and an Evernote ebook, and uh, he has been really successful with it. And he's finally decided to share all his ideas in, in an ebook that he wrote. And it's I got a sneak peek at it. It's really it's really useful. That's great. Hey, I just wanted to touch real fast for anybody who's trying to figure out what their secret magical SpringPad email address is. If you go into SpringPad and you click on your little picture icon in the upper right hand corner, go into help and under settings you'll find that special email address. 
Now, there's another address that you can send emails into if you do it from your native client, you know, whatever account you normally register with Springpad with. But if you use that special address, you can send them in from anywhere. And that's a, that special address is the one you want to use for things like IFTTT. Yeah. Because most of us are used to having more than one email address these days, so yep. if you use your the generic one, you have to be specifically from the email that you register with Springpad with. But using the really specific one with all the numbers on the other side uh, means mm -hmm. you can send it from work, from home, wherever. You don't have to worry about it. It'll always go there. So. Right. All right. So we've covered our hacks. We've covered our news. Um, yeah. we've, gotten, we've finally gotten you back in the swing from Mexico. <laughs> so, you know, back in the cold Boston weather. So, although I think it's probably colder down here than it is up there right now. Or we got like eight inches of snow the day after I got back, okay? There's we just keep snow. adding to it. And the thing is, I think by Christmas there's not going to be any snow on the ground. I think it's no. going to rain this weekend. So. <laughs> anyway, so I think it's time that we bring our guest on and yeah. introduce her. Uh, it, now she's she's not new to Springpad. She's been there for almost a year now, I think, or close yes. to it, hasn't she? But she's yes. got a new role there. Yes, she does. She is our new CEO, Jacqueline Hampton. Hi, Jacqueline. Hello. Hello, Jacqueline. Hi, Springpad. Hi, Art. Welcome to the show. Thank uh, this you for is, having this me. Is our, it's our pleasure. I'm glad to see that you're able to spend a little time with us. Although uh, the penguin is peeking over your head, so if he starts making faces, we'll. <laughs> you always have to watch what's in the background. I'm not particular about mine. So, so Jacqueline, uh, tell us a little bit first about just you at SpringPad. How did you get to be the CEO? Because that's a big step up, and and it's a nice role to have. A little bit about where you're coming from, and also where do you see SpringPad going? Sure. Well, that's quite a mouthful art, but I'll do what I can. <laughs> um, so my background was in the media and entertainment space, and then I spent the second half of that career at Time Inc. running Corp Dev for them. So very much a consumer focus. All our titles are titles that you would know and read every day. Um, you know, Time Magazine, Sports Illustrated, People in Style, a handful of them. So when I came up to Boston and I found SpringPad, I started consulting with them in the spring around their strategy and where they were going. And then over the summer, we had negotiations for me to become CEO, and that happened in August. So lucky us. Yeah, it was, um, I think, a great fit. You know, I found in the spring when I was here that I fell in love with the product, I fell in love with the team, and I thought it could do good for so many people. It was just a question of getting the word out more, um, you know, adding some extra features into the app, and so that's really what we've been working on since I joined. That's great. Now, the one thing you didn't reveal to us, though, is you have a, a bit of a diversified background here. You didn't start in the tech area. You're a chef, aren't you? Um, I am a passionate cook, I would call it. So, <laughs> okay, okay. You know, I have a ton of admiration for the real chefs in this world and what they do, and, and it's um, an impressive job that they have, so I would never want to put myself up there, but it's been a passion for a long time, and between Time Inc. and when I found SpringPad, I took some time off and wanted to pursue those passions, so you're right, Art, I did go to culinary school, and I did graduate, so... Excellent. Went to now, very school here in it was in Cambridge, right? Yes, here in Cambridge. Yeah. yeah. Now, see, as as an advocate, of, you know, as a practitioned burner of boiled water, um, anybody <laughs> with culinary, <laughs> culinary skills to me, you know, is up on a pedestal high. So, you know, I watch Chopped, I watch Food Network with yep. admiration. So. Well, my friends and my family are very happy that I went to <laughs> culinary school, and so is the team here on occasion when I bring something now, in. Now that raises a very interesting question because there is a, a recipe and a food component and there's actually a pretty strong foodie aspect to SpringPad. Uh, have you found that you use SpringPad to help with your food passions? I do, Art, and it's interesting because I've actually struggled in the past with how to manage all my recipes. They're all over my house. I have more than 20 cookbooks, 
some in English, some in Spanish. <laughs> um, you know, I have binders that I created for the summer, like kind of spring summer recipes, fall winter recipes. And I've played around with different apps in the past and I've never found one that really works. And so far, I love SpringPad for it. So I'll have to admit, I have so many recipes, they're not all in SpringPad yet, quite yet. Um, but what I decided to do is kind of move them over time. So every time I cook something now, it goes into SpringPad. That way I can use the shopping list, and then I know it's there for the next time. So it's actually been a really interesting way to kind of prune down my recipes, too, to the ones that I really love. Now, if you had to say you're starting into this as uh, someone with a very strong cooking background, uh, what would be one tip that you would give someone who's saying, look, I've got these recipes everywhere, and I want to start getting them organized in SpringPad. Where should I start? What's a good place that you think someone could start at? That's an interesting question. So, um, one, I think it's a uh, how do you think about your recipes? So, for me, it's spring and summer versus fall and winter because I have a different cooking style. So, my spring and summer is all about the farmer's market, local fresh vegetables, much lighter meals. Winter for me is about soups and stews and braises. And so, it's, it's really a completely different set. Um, someone else, it might be uh, quick and easy dinners that they can do when they come home from work versus things that they want to do on a weekend. So there's a little bit of just starting with a division of, of how you think about things, and to me that becomes a couple different recipe notebooks. Um, and then it's starting to put your favorites in, kind of getting used to the system. Using the shopping list, it has saved my life because I used to have 50 different post-it notes everywhere with everything I needed to get from the grocery store, and I would always forget something. And now it's always in spring pad. I know exactly where to go. Anytime I need something, I put it in there, and then I always have it with me. So. Especially with those regular recipes, Art, like she's talking about, you know, putting in her favorites that she's got collected all over the place. Then you've got a, a, res a shopping list that you can have forever, right? Like these mm -hmm. re favorite recipes can have standing shopping lists, and they work really well in that new recipe custom notebook where you've got your favorite recipes in one tab, and then you've got all your grocery lists in the other. They're all just yeah. waiting there for you for whenever you want to cook it. So sort of like once they're in there, they're there for life. Once they're in there, the other thing I would suggest is when you start putting your recipes in, tag them. So when I dip my binders at home, I have it kind of you know, appetizers, salads, soups, and then I get into entrees and their pasta, chicken, beef, or whatever. So I've ended up using the tags for that so that it's easier for me to search through. If I'm in the mood for chicken, I can just go to the chicken tag and see everything that's there. So. Yeah. See, that's, that's fantastic stuff. And Jacqueline, you haven't had the pleasure of, in, of meeting the thinking hat. I have not. <laughs> but the thinking hat shows up every so often when I get a brainstorm when you guys are talking about these things. And... Did the thinking hat come from Hogwarts, by the way? <laughs> Pretty close. It's a little flatter on the top. It's much more of a steampunk kind of thinking hat. So, um, What intrigues me about what you're talking with the recipes is the fact with SpringPad's ability to have multiple notebooks. If I was planning a dinner event, I could throw in a notebook for the dinner event go to the recipe books and take springs and then assign them to that dinner event notebook as well. So, are so you're, a you're absolutely right, and I'll one-up you on that because I have done that before. Um, okay. For events here in Boston. But then what I do from that is I create the shopping list of what's needed. And okay. I email that to my friend who is the designated grocery shopper because he doesn't cook, and then he has the list in his spring pad so he can go to the grocery store for me. Whoa. Whoa. That's great. <laughs> and it's funny you bring that up because I don't know if you remember years ago there was a Microsoft ad where the dad was walking around the grocery store checking off items and the kids were at home adding <laughs> things to the list. My <laughs> wife has done that to me. <laughs> so, using spring pad. So I will be going through going, I'm done. Oh, wait, there's more. Where did that come from? <laughs> Yeah, it, it does happen. And take things like the virtual bartender setup and add the drinks into it, plan your entire event. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that I think people realize when they start working with SpringPad is that it's more than just little boxes. It's more than just little notebooks. It can actually organize entire life events and life sequences uh, just by using the same structures in different ways. So that's fantastic. So I know you're, you're a very busy person. Uh, if do you have anything you'd like to wrap up here? Just really quickly, because I didn't fully answer your question before, so and your very first one. So just looking forward to next year. Okay. Um, you know, there are 
more fun things coming, I would say. So I know that Devin talked a little bit earlier about our experts and kind of bringing that um, customized advice to you and kind of layering SpringPad into it. But our real goal is to help find everybody, find ways to get inspired and get organized and get things done. So you'll see more of that coming around the recipes and other things that you just mentioned. The more we see what people are using in terms of these new customized templates, there'll be a lot of enhanced features around those specifically as well, and then around SpringPad in general. So there's a lot in the works behind all the toys, and that's <laughs> all to come next year. That's fantastic. Uh, I know everybody that I've talked to in the community and people who have gotten involved working with SpringPad are always anxious to see what's next. What's the next idea? What's the next way to use this? And it's interesting because they're not sitting around saying, what are you going to do for us? It's, how can we use this? We love this tool. What else can we do with it? How can we go in different directions? And I've been finding more and more people. I was talking to a gentleman the other day who's working on student portfolios and having students doing research into SpringPad notebooks using the extensions and capturing and doing those types of pieces. Things that normally just don't really occur right off the top of the head. The potential is there. So I think it's great to see the, the path that you guys are taking. Great. All right. Well, Jacqueline, thank you for being with us today. Yes, thank awesome. you very much. <laughs> I really appreciate it. It was very fun. Yes. You are welcome back anytime. Thank you. All right, and I think we have to talk about uh, next year's shows. Yes. We've got a lot coming up. We've got all kinds of different things on the docket for next year, all kinds of big ideas, and we're always looking for new ideas. Yeah. So anybody who's, who's watching the show and has an idea of some direction you'd like us to go in, let us know. Uh, you can get a hold of us on Twitter. You can get a hold of us on Facebook, Google+, pretty much any place. I mean, we're all over the place. So... <laughs> Yeah, and just to be, you know, we talked about uh, Daniel's, uh, Daniel Gold's ebook. Um, he's mm -hmm. going to talk about, um, or how to publish an ebook, rather. Um, and I know that we're going to have uh, Peter Walsh here with us um, sharing some more organizational tips. I'm not going to say more because I can't yet. Um, <laughs> but we're going to have a lot more guests next year. We have a ton lined up already. Um, and we're really, really excited because I think that. Uh, they're just it's going to take these shows to the next level in terms of the kind of information that we're offering you and uh, uh, giving you more helpful tips and things that you can apply. And again, as always, there'll be a notebook associated with it where you can you know quickly save all the tips that we're giving here or links to you know uh, arts hacks and things like that. So expect a lot more in 2014. Speaking of hacks, I'll throw out one more. I wrote it up this week, but I think it's very apropos as we head into the holiday, and that's the thank you tracker. Uh, one of the challenges, especially if you've got kids or a large family and you know the gifts are being exchanged and you want to send out thank you notes afterwards, but uh, who gave who to what? Because the cards always get lost in the wrapping paper. Here's a trick. Create a quick notebook. Now, this is focused primarily on mobile because you're not really going to be sitting there with your laptop, but create a notebook. Take the picture of the item as whoever it is opens it up. And when you get the notebook set up, put tags in the notebook with everybody's name in it. So that way when you take the picture, tag it with their name, it's in the thank you tracker notebook. Then when you go back afterwards, you can just filter on that person's name, see all the gifts that were given, and be able to send out your thank you notes appropriately. That's great, Art. That's really great. And, you know, another thing is... Um, Another way that works great with um, holiday cards is if you're needing to update your address book, take pictures of all the holiday cards you get in the return addresses and in case you can double back and check to make sure that your addresses are all current for the next year. Absolutely. It's a great way to keep things organized. I've become a big advocate of the contact notebook inside of, inside of um, SpringPad, creating your own notebook for those contacts. It doesn't synchronize with all the devices, but it doesn't need to because that's not its purpose. It's not you know, a replacement for your phone dialer. It's a great way to basically build up personal dossiers on people so that you know things, not only just you know, their name and their address, but what kinds of things they're interested in, what movies you went to with them, and all of that background information that can be so useful in keeping things organized and keeping you ahead of the curve. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Art, I believe we made a promise in the beginning of the show. Uh, all know. right. I'll oh, get him. Monkey behind you. <laughs> all right. Now, the story with this is 
that last year I wore this into a basketball game for my kids. <laughs> and they and my middle daughter decided that she never wanted to see him again because she was mildly <laughs> embarrassed. Well, significantly embarrassed. So when he was dug out this year, he was hidden from me. So I had to resort to the threat of either return the monkey hat or I spend the day posting baby pictures to Facebook. Oh, my dad does that all the time. Now, it's really not that bad of a hat until you do this. <laughs> and then you have the singing monkeys with the light-up nose. Now, at this point, I'm not even going to put it on, but just... So, oh, my God. So as the parent of children, any opportunity you have to induce some mild embarrassment is worth doing. So, oh, my gosh. So that's the Christmas cool. monkey. <laughs> so, and that's the thing. Everybody should be having fun this year. Don't, don't get yourself stressed out in the holiday season. Don't worry about, is this right? Is that right? Did I get the right gift? Am I going to get the right thing? Just relax. Be thankful for what you've got and the people around you and enjoy them because when it comes down to it, things can be replaced and disappeared, but the people are the things that matter. That's true. So. That's true. Here's to that, Art. Here's to a happy holiday with all your family and friends. Here's to a happy new year. Here's to a great 2013. I think that's yeah. a really exciting year. Lots of great new stuff, and I'm so excited, Art, that you and I get to do the show together, and I'm so glad that we get to keep doing it in 2014. It's really favorite part of my week. It's a lot of fun. Cool. All, All right, right everyone. Well, I guess we're going to wrap it up for yep. 2013. Happy holidays, everyone watching, and we'll see you next year with all new shows and new types of shows. So. Signing off. See ya. <laughs>